Hey everyone, this is David Brown from Lycobirds with the update for September 27th from the Ashland Hawkwatch in Hokesson, Delaware. First, we'll go through some photos for the week and talk about raptor identification, and then I'll show the migration totals from the week. And I'll warn you now, it wasn't the greatest week ever, so numbers were relatively low this week. But let's get into the photos. All right, let's start off with an easy one. Here we have an adult bald eagle. Here we have a hawk that's shaped like a flying cross, so we should be thinking occipiter. Remember, we see a long tail, but we also see rounded wingtips compared to the pointed wingtips we might see on a falcon. So when we're looking at occipiters, we're thinking sharp-shinned hawk or cooper's hawk. On this bird, we see a very straight tip to the tail, so all the tail feathers are about the same length. We see a relatively small head and kind of uh, shorter, more curved wings. This is a sharp-shinned hawk. Here we have a somewhat lanky raptor. Again, we see a long tail and long wings, but on this bird we see a dark brown head and a lot of orange to the underside. This is a juvenile northern harrier. Here's a bird that's a hawk in name only. This is a common night hawk, and we've talked about it in other recent videos, but they're just really distinctive based on that overall shape. They have really thin wings, and up close you see these white patches in the wings to clinch the ID. Here's a small raptor where we see a long tail, but we also see very pointed wings, so we should be thinking falcon. And we see that it's light overall underneath and a pretty distinctive facial pattern. This is an American kestrel. Here's another hawk with a long tail and long rounded wings. We should be thinking occipiter, but on this one we're seeing a rounded tail tip because the outer tail feathers are shorter than the central ones. We see a larger head. We see streaking that's concentrated on the upper breast and not so much down on the belly. And overall, just a more lanky shape. This is a juvenile Cooper's hawk. Here's a raptor where we see pointed wings. So we should be thinking falcon. And we see a lot of dark streaking to the underside of the body. This is a merlin. Here's a hawk in a soar. And we don't see that long tail that we saw on the occipiters. So we should be thinking beautio. It's pretty compact overall with pointed wingtips, so we should be thinking broad-winged hawk. And based off of the plumage, this is a juvenile. Here we have another juvenile beautio, but I want to point out what is different on this bird compared to that juvenile broad-winged hawk that we just saw. So on this bird, I'm not seeing pointed wingtips. I'm seeing very rounded or squared off wingtips. We see it's made up of five feathers, one, two, three, four, five, compared to the four feathers that made up the wingtip of the broad wing, which gave it a very pointed look. So we have a more rounded wingtip or blunt wingtip, and we see light shining through. It's a translucent crescent. Some people say it's banana shaped, but we see that here on both wings, just where the feathers are a little paler and let that light shine through. So the wingtips are very different on this bird than we saw on that broad winged hawk. Overall, the head and body look very similar, not really any differences to point out there. And if we take a look at the tail, the tail is maybe slightly different. We see maybe some bolder banding here before we get to that darker tip. So this is a juvenile red-shouldered hawk. And I'll flip back and forth a few times so we can look at the differences. So here we are back at the broad-winged hawk. Again, see how pointed the wingtips are. And the tail, we see maybe a little bit of banding and then a very obvious dark tip. If we go back to the red-shouldered, again, there's more blunt wing tips with the translucent crescents and maybe a slightly different tail pattern. But from a distance, the one thing we're really looking for is just that overall shape of the wingtip and if there's a translucent crescent. And if we look at the posture of the wings, you can see on the red-shouldered, it kind of curves its wings forward a little bit. If we go back to the broad wing, they're just held more straight out. So one more time, this is the juvenile broad-winged hawk. And here we have the juvenile red-shouldered hawk. Here we have a raptor in a glide posture, and this shape is a good one to know. This is pretty distinctive. Again, we see a fairly long tail and kind of skinny wings that are pointed, especially in this posture. This is another northern harrier. Here's another big, lanky raptor, wings slightly drooped, black and white plumage overall. This is an osprey. Here's a crazy flying machine that came over the Hawk Watch, and I looked it up, and the official name for these are Auto Gyro or Gyro Plane. Here we have another Northern Harrier, but if we look at the plumage of this one, we see that overall it's very white underneath. We see dark wingtips and a dark trailing edge to the secondaries. 
this is an adult male northern harrier. Remember, the females and the juveniles of both sexes have more of that brown overall plumage, but the adult males have this distinctive plumage that earns them the nickname gray ghost. We just saw the juvenile plumage of this species. This is pretty distinctive. It's an adult red-shouldered hawk. Here's a raptor that's perched. We see a relatively skinny body and a long tail, so we should be thinking excipiter. Now, most of the excipiters we've seen in this video and previous videos so far this season have been juveniles, but on this bird, we see a lot of orange barring to the underside, making this an adult. Now, is this a sharp-shinned hawk or a cooper's hawk? The one main thing we can look at when an excipiter is perched and facing us is the tail. We can see if all of the tail feathers are about the same length or not. So looking here, we see that the outer tail feathers, which fold underneath, are quite a bit shorter than the central ones. So we get sort of a pattern where we see different length tail feathers. And when we see that, that's a good field mark for Cooper's hawks. Now, we can also look at the head. This bird seems to have a relatively large head and a really fierce look to it. I would say that for sharp-shinned hawks, they have more of a small head with a bug-eyed appearance. Sometimes it looks like a small head with a big eyeball. On Cooper's hawks, they just look really fierce. So I would say this tail pattern combined with this look to the head make this an adult Cooper's hawk. Here we have an eagle that due to the lighting and the distance, we mainly just have a silhouette. We can't really see the plumage details very well. But the main things that stick out to me about this bird is we want to see how large the head is. And I would say that this bird has a relatively large head, which is a good field mark for a bald eagle. And even with the poor lighting, we can make out that there's a bit of white here in this wing pit area, which is another good field mark for young bald eagles, especially juveniles. As we're getting later in the season, especially second half of October on, and we begin looking for golden eagles, what we would want to see is a much smaller head. And we would also be hoping to see some white patches in the wings on the immatures. But again, you don't always see that and it's variable. The one other thing on golden eagles is a lot of times the wings pinch in a lot here near the body. So on this bald eagle, you can see that the wings pinch in a little bit. You can get a bit of this curve, but it's usually more exaggerated on the golden eagles. So when we're basing it off a of shape, we're looking for that smaller head, the more pinched in wings and hoping to see white patches in the centers of the wings for the golden eagles. But since this bird has a large head and the white here in the wing pit, that makes this a bald eagle. All right, now let's take a look at hawk count and see the totals for the past week. So this period would start on the 21st. So from the last video, we had just finished up a couple good days in a row with 160 birds and 213. But after that, it's really been pretty slow. You know, we started off with 47. The best day was only 82. And then the past couple days, 10, 6, 2. There's been a lot of rain the past couple days, just a lot of unfavorable weather. And I talked about in previous videos, the broad winged hawks, and maybe we still had a little bit of hope that we would start to get some, but you can see that in this period, hardly any broad wings, six the one day, 10, three. So we have broken 100 broad wings for the season, but a very disappointing number overall, the lowest ever for the Ashland Hawk Watch, which has been run since 2007. Um, Last year in September, we had over 15,000 broad-winged hawks. So again, it seems just that the easterly winds that we had during the entire broad-winged hawk window probably pushed them all to the west of us. And there's pretty significant numbers starting to move through Mexico and Texas. So um, it seems that a lot of the broad wings did go around us. Now we've had rainy weather the past couple of days, and that might have held up any migration. So there's a chance when this poor weather finally breaks, which looks like towards the middle or end of next week, once we're into October, October 2nd and 3rd, um, there's a chance that we may get some late broad wings moving through then, but it seems like we've missed the, any chance of a really big broad wing day. So we'll just have to accept the fact that it's been kind of the lowest year ever for broad wings. 
And really, it's been slow the past week for everything else as well. You can see, you know, we had a day with 32 Sharpies. That may be the most exciting thing that happened. And, you know, we're getting some Kestrels and Merlins and Peregrines, things like that. So we're getting small numbers of everything you would expect. But um, it's just been poor weather. Once this weather breaks and we get some sunshine and maybe some northwesterly winds, I think we should have some pretty good days kind of as the backlog comes through. Um, you know, as we're coming into early October, we're coming into peak time for the exhibitors and the falcons and just overall a really good variety of the species that we see. So once the weather turns around, we'll start looking for higher numbers again. But it seems like a uh, high number of broadwings may be out of the question for this year. But you never know what you're going to see up at the Hawk Watch. Even with the rainy conditions today, I did have a new species for Ashland, which was blue winged teal. There was a flock of 10 of them that flew over. And actually, uh, just the other morning, Kim and I had a hooded warbler, which was another new species for me for Ashland. So it's exciting to get out and get new species. Again, this is my eighth season here, so I've seen most things already. But every once in a while, I'm still getting a new species for the Ashland Nature Center eBird hotspot. So it's a lot of fun to, to pick up those species. Anyway, I hope you can come out and visit us soon out at the Ashland Hawk Watch here in northern Delaware. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.